Yo, welcome to the Bill Collector. We're on Bill, and I'm a collector. Now, today, as usual, we're going to talk about the uh, my Will Clark collection, which I call the Clark collection. And if you're on Instagram, uh, you can find the collection there at Will Clark Collector. So. If you're there, you know, you can see some, some of the details regarding the collection. And uh, and then I'll talk about it here and whatnot. And then later on in the episode, I'm going to talk about Jackie Robinson a little bit um, as he's a Black history hero. So right now, got the number 42 on. And at the same time, the Will Clark 1984 Olympic hat. Hey, if you joined, what's happening, guys? I'm talking about the Will Clark collection. And then Jackie Robinson a little bit. But I got my Jackie Robinson jersey on once again and the Will Clark hat. Some people over here that want to know, too. Now, uh... Today, as it was yesterday, and I think the day before that, I'm in Southern California, and uh, we're in February, and we're also in the high 80s, And uh, but don't get me wrong, it's nice because uh, it's nice to throw on a pair of shorts, go on a little bike ride in the daytime, get some sun, and that's just what I did today. So, beautiful, beautiful day. And... Uh, so lucky me, I've said this before, but pff, looking looking at, at this baby face right here, joke. Um, I'm a grandpa, and that's because I started young. And uh, I went to go visit my daughter and the grandkids today, as I'm lucky enough to have her just be about two and a half miles down the road. And uh, it's always nice to see the kids. And... Uh, she's the recipient of my pickle making <laughs> i make pickles and i make the best pickles you've ever tasted if you've ever tasted them and uh she loves them and so i went to take a cold batch over there a bike so really fun uh see the kids uh play with my grandson's uh brand new little animal toy that he that he's loving right now and um it was great and uh as soon as they start to poop they're my grandkids so it's hasta la vista and let my daughter deal with that one so oh of being a grandparent but like i said i started early now on to something else in regards to the collection now honestly you can see I have a lot, and uh, my collection's pretty important to me. As here's how I look at it it's over 30 years in the making. So, you tell me one thing you did for 30 years, and the same or not. Don't compare. But there's so many social media. Uh, uh, sites to do and um facebook's like the old dog site it's like by the time your parents get on about time to get off so i don't frequent facebook or mega or whatever the hell it's called right now but uh i got a message that was just baking in there for, for what since uh what was it it's the first message was in September, and then another one at the beginning of October, and then another one middle October, and then disappeared. And uh, the message was from a guy named Jeff Moore. All right. Now, before I get to anything about the situation, 
if you're watching Jeff Moore, if you're not, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm sending Jeff positive vibes. Jeff just went through a quadruple bypass and he's on the recovery. And uh, and luckily for Jeff, they caught it before it was a, an, an episode. So uh, get well, Jeff. Um, like I said, positive vibes to you, buddy. And uh, happy collecting. And, and this is where it's going because Jeff's a collector. Now, I'll be name dropping whenever I can because isn't that what you do? But I have a friend named Daniel. And uh, I have met Daniel um, through Instagram. I have to sift which of these social medias you meet people on. But he makes really cool artwork and uh, yada, yada, yada. So you strike up the conversations with these people. And um turns out to be a real cool guy. turns out to be that we frequented some of the same places in Sierra Madre where my grandfather lived and where he went to school. We're both from the, from the same generation and we're both collectors. Uh, and he's a huge Dale Murphy collector as well as a talented artist. And uh, this message that I got today had to do with a piece of art Daniel made for his um, uber popular pop fly prints that he's making. And they're, they're like, I'll show you in a minute because I got one. So the message from this Jeff was, hey, I understand you have one of the 11 prints made. And then he goes on name your price and then he says two thousand dollars and then the next message says twenty three hundred dollars and then the message just dropped i mean he's trying to get a hold of me and i got a hold of him today after all these months and lucky for him he found one and uh i mean 11 prints that's very very rare there's 11 of these things and i'm gonna hold mine up this guy offered me 2300 bucks for this and say he's willing to to have another one but you know what oh shoot i got all day to talk so i'm gonna talk i had seen daniel had done like a a bo jackson comic ish illustration uh, regarding Bo Jackson, and that ended up going to my friend TJ, who's the owner of a, a of a batting cage and baseball instructional place called Baseball Central in Los Angeles, and he's a huge Bo fan. So it went there, and uh, I had through it, uh, direct messaging. He had seen a Dale Murphy that I had painted, and um, so we we swapped. And I asked him to make me a Will Clark comic book type thing in trade for that, all right? So, you know, this guy was willing to drop 2300 bucks on this thing, but he bought the one with no backstory. This one's, if you're willing to pay 2300 bucks, this is way more valuable than that. Daniel made, Daniel made the design for me. FYI, that's called privilege in some circles. And uh, when I found out that there was only 11 of these, uh, that's, that's pretty rare. So we're going to hang on to this and... Uh, by the way, I framed this as well. So the print was sent to me. And these are, you can't really see it, but uh, it's printed on a thick cardstock. <clears throat> and it's not a comic book. It's just a nice print that mimics a comic book cover. And uh, <clears throat> anyhow, 2300 bucks. Look, this is my collection. So on top, like... This isn't just a thing to me. So that guy's trying to collect all of these as his collection. Now, from my perspective, you're prying 
something more than just a print that you desire from my hands. This has sentimental value, which, you know, to me makes this priceless. So, um, but hey, you know, I need a down payment for a home if you're really serious. But anyways, Daniel, Popfly, uh, they're, they're, they're awesome. I mean, look at this stuff. Check him out. You guys are probably already following, but, um, hey, if you're just joining, it's Bill from The Bill Collector, and Bill and I collect. So, uh, as you can see, I am repping the uh, 1984 Olympics baseball hat and uh, also wearing my Jackie Robinson's jersey because I'm going to talk about Jackie in a bit. But, you know, as a, as a kid growing up in the L.A. area, the Dodgers are definitely the, the closest team, and, and that's the team that, that I went to see the games with my family, friends, families, friends, my parents, grandparents, just everybody. That's where we went. We rarely went to the Angel game. And uh, in 1984, the baseball was included in the Olympics that year as an exhibition sport. I guess I had never been in the Olympics before, just as skateboarding was introduced to the Olympics, the past Summer Olympics, and whatever other sports were first-timers. And Will Clark was a, he was part of that. I mean, we're talking about the best college players America had to offer were on that team. And we're talking players like uh, Mark McGuire, Will Clark, Corey Snyder, Chris Glenn, uh, Oda B. McBowell, McDowell, <laughs> McBowell, excuse me. And, uh, a squadron of future major leaguers and uh, college superstars. And through the tournament, they pass through the city of Los Angeles and uh, they have the games at Dodger Stadium. And uh, unbeknownst to me that Will Clark was on that team and even who he was at the time, because I was just maybe 10, I think, I was starting my skateboarding phase at that point, so I wasn't really following sports players. But we went to the game. They won the game, and they advanced in the series to uh, end up winning the silver medal in, in the Olympics. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's that era that uh, I'm kind of like, focusing on as a collector right now uh and i go through little phases you know like for a minute there i was collecting all kinds of texas stuff because you know i really have that so i'm going to show you a couple items that uh i have that represent that era of will clark's career and uh will clark is Let's see, so how it worked out with Will Clark in that era of, of college baseball players was, I believe it was ESPN, they were trying to broaden their scope of what they uh, showed on the, on the channel, and college baseball was the thing they chose, and it was like a timing thing. And it just so happened that Will Clark's team, Mississippi State University, was making a good run towards a national championship. He was on the team. He was one of the stars with Rafael Palmero of that team. And uh, anyway, so like like cable TV and uh, exposure and, and whatnot, Will Clark was famous before he got to the big leagues. And that's just a fact. So, um, anyhow, the items. <clears throat> First item I'm going to show you is something that uh, 
you know, going through and actually finding things, well, like to find an autographed baseball with the team uh, uh, that that was, you're like, you're talking big bucks. And I try to keep, I try to keep the, the collection, uh, collecting from a budget perspective, all right? So my thing was, when I was a kid, I didn't have all kinds of money to, to, to do this. And I tr I'm trying to replicate that. Now, this item here, I've never seen, I've never seen anybody with anything like this, but uh, I had bought the can on eBay. And this is a can from, uh, I believe it is 19, all right, let me look, 1980 LA Olympic Committee telling us that in 1984 Olympics, baseball is going to be included in those games as an exhibition sport. And uh, I found this blank white area really curious, like why it would be blank, but that's what I did with the, uh, the can. I had that thing signed, crispy blue autograph. And this can was full when I purchased it. And uh, it being on display on the shelf that I had had it on, I was noticing some syrup was coming out of these little, it was eating away at the bottom of the can. So I had to knuckle up and uh, just empty it. I didn't need that syrup all over the place. And uh, anyhow, I need to find a better way to protect this can though, because very fragile. Fragile. All right. So this is a, uh, this next item, it's a wish list item that I want to get autographed one day. And I'm just going to take it out of this little case here because it's already been discolored anyways. But this is a, a ball from those games. I do not know if it was game played. It might have just been in the sack. It might have just been for sale. I don't know. I didn't get those details when I bought it. But this ball is telling us about the games. I got a case. Oh, oh are you talking about for my um for my can? Because man, I want to I might have to make one. I used to work in the plastic and acrylic industry, and there might be some tube acrylic that I could slip that can into and cap it off. But so there you go. A game ball, 1984 Olympics. And uh, yeah, oh, oh, so here, I feel like I want the autograph to be right under, because I don't plan on getting anybody else's autograph on there. And if I did, it'd be a secondary autograph. Thinking about getting one right there if I was to get an autograph, because the sweet spot is just kind of like what? And I want to display the Olympic star in circles. That's just me. But uh, yeah, I have a I have a an autograph on a on a different ball. On the sweet spot. And that committee. If you're a Will Clark collector, if you're not a Will Clark collector, oh dude, that's a sick item. So I got a, something going on over here, and this guy has a, a ball from the 1994 World Series, which was never played, and I think those items are pretty cool. This is kind of off topic, but I have other, uh, I have smaller collections. <clears throat> and one of them is of uh, Fernando Valenzuela. And one of the items that I picked up on eBay was a ticket from my, which would have been my birthday in 1981. So I would have been turning seven that day. And uh, that game was never played because of the uh, the strike that happened in 1981. So I, I believe that that season missed about four months 
And uh, anyway, so I got a brand new ticket. And I don't know about you guys, but tickets, they're a thing of the past. I bought tickets um, to the Will Clark retirement ceremony that's going to happen in uh, at Oracle, Oracle Park July of this year. No tickets, man. That's whack. FYI, all MLB teams, no tickets are whack. Dude. I mean, come on. If it's a rat game, you got an instant, you know, memorabilia from it. And I've been to a no-hitter before. <clears throat> but when you're 18, you ain't thinking about ticket stubs. And that no-hitter, ironically, was... The Kevin Gross pitched a no-hitter against the Giants, and I think it was 1992 or something like that, and I was at that game. But I probably threw the ticket stub in the trash on purpose because my boy's team got no-hit. But anyways, that's how that goes. So I miss old tickets. Now, uh, like I said, if you're just, just joining in, the hat, this wasn't a readily available item. So uh, when you're somebody like me, you just make it your damn self, okay? And how do I do that? Well, the machine behind me is a plotter. And that cuts vinyl. It cuts this type of vinyl, which is heat transfer vinyl. And uh, that thing eats crickets. For lunch. Feel me? So if you got a cricket, that's cricket's daddy, son. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you use it, Brett? A uh, uh, plotter? Because, um, shit, man, I, I, use, I use my plotter all the time. Now, maybe I've mentioned this, but maybe I, I haven't yet. I'm in the graphics industry, uh, in and out, like, whenever it needs me and uh that's a type of work i've been doing for pushing 20 years now oh yes you do have that hat i remember <laughs> that you're talking about a plotter yeah i just kept mine like looking like this though yeah look at that crispy crispiness uh yeah, it was weird that Will Clark wasn't included in the real the real top set of that uh Olympic team because he was a, a star of that team. But if I show you an autograph, it's most likely going to be in blue. Anything I get now is probably going to be in blue. It just shows up a lot nicer on uh on the card. Hey, what's I just mentioned you, brother. Uh Daniel because uh, <laughs> here's something funny, Daniel. I'm talking to uh, nofilter.net, so I'm going to be looking this way, but I'm going to talk to you. I looked at a Facebook message. I don't check Facebook too often. Facebook message. A guy was offering me $2,300 for, for uh, funny that you jumped on, dude. <laughs> I'm talking about this on my podcast today on nofilter.net. But somebody offered me 2300 bucks for it. Nah, you can't afford mine, bro. So that's how I feel about it. I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm live on something else over here just for some questions and some interactivity. But, uh, hey, look, you can't afford it. So uh, that's the way that goes. I got mine. And it means that doesn't place in his room like it places in here. So, uh, yeah, uh, being a collector and Daniel, he's a, he's a, a very talented person and check him out. Pop fly pop shop. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm kind of just gonna, I showed you, I showed you this one last time. I mean, sick card, sick autograph kids, get your stuff autographed in blue Sharpie on your cards. Your Get your balls signed in a ballpoint pen, your balls. I don't know if that's an opinion, but I, I have the best results with 
with those applications. So um, take heed if you're a collector and you like autographs. Now, uh, I think I'm kind of going on time and I'm making good time today. And uh, just like that, we're going to talk a little Jackie Robinson. And uh, like I said, got the jersey here. But I got the Will Clark uh, Olympic hat on, and it goes great together. Boop, boop, boop. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Looking like a baseball geek. <clears throat> now, a part of this show here is to uh, talk about baseball, talk about my collection, and talk about the art that I make and uh, some of the reasons why I make the art. Yeah, dude. Love this jersey, bro. Thanks. And uh, one of the things that a lot of me and my art friends are doing right now is uh, we're making card art. On Instagram, you guys know what card art is. No filter, Vil. And outside of Instagram, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But this is a picture that I... I uh, my bad, a card art that I had done of Jackie Robinson. And um, in explaining, people people trip out on the string. And uh, one of the reasons I, one of the reasons I, let me, let me see, I feel like somebody might be trying to talk to me over here. Oh, yes, Steven, dude, are you there? I hope you are. I'm still trying to learn this platform, but I'll keep that open. I was shocked when I saw that Will Clark comic. I have a lot of baseball cards and a huge collect. Well, yeah, so the um the Will Clark thing, 2300 bucks. But look, when you're a Will Clark collector like me, you're taking a part of the Will Clark collection, and that's like... You better pay me, sucker. And if you're willing to drop 23 on it, you're willing to drop more than that on it. So, like I said, from my cold, dead hand. So, but back to Jackie Robinson. <clears throat> to me, Jackie Robinson is one of the most important figures in baseball history. I'll say it once and I'll say it twice. And uh, for what he represents, the type of person he was, and there was a, a precise reason he was the one chosen. And uh, he made good on that choice. And so uh, for me, Jackie Robinson is, is uh, one of those players that I'm going to constantly just keep making art of because he's worthy of, of that. And so I'm going to show you some of the smaller stuff, and then I have a painting that I'll show you in a moment. Now, this is a piece of art that I made, and, and if you follow me, you'll see some artwork that's really, like, I'm going to say black and white, but just, you know, high contrast, two-color stuff. And uh, anyhow, so this one right here, the Jackie Robinson, I have made for... Uh, Oh, 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 plenty of reasons. Okay, I've used that art, scan it through the computer, turn it into vector artwork. And you can make decals from that. You can make stencils. You can make, uh, I made a t-shirt with the face on it and uh, so on and so forth. And I actually dressed up one of his, uh, one of his cases these type of four screw old school cases with a frosted glass looking vinyl image of that. So, uh, excuse me. And that's some of the stuff that we do in the graphics industry. And, uh, you know, it looks like a lot of people are, are learning the, the simple applications of it with their crickets at home. Um, though I know a cricket can't do, what crickets daddy can do eats crickets 
real plotter. Don't get one. <laughs> I just need it for my life. It's one more tool in the tool room box tool place. This is my office, so right, right to the other area, that computer right there is what operates that machine. And uh, bought that machine in, uh, shoot, 2009. And uh, it was nice because I, what I paid for it, I paid it back with a, with a quick couple jobs. Personal and professional reasons I use that thing right now. All right, so I showed you the Jackie card art, and then I showed you the Jackie, I'll just call it stencil drawing. Now, I believe it was 2018. I took on a project, uh, and it wasn't quite the entire season, but was it? Whatever. Dude, I drew so much. I drew every night for maybe 140 Dodger games. So I have a friend named Emma. <clears throat> and Emma writes a haiku at the end of every Dodger game about the Dodger game. And so I thought those were really cool. And I asked her if it would be okay if I use those haikus as an inspiration for drawing. So I'm not even going to, I mean, it gets, it gets so cryptic when I start drawing stuff, but her haikus in there and this game happened on Jackie Robinson day. And, uh, well, let's just say jock, according to her, hit a walk off dong, dong, dong. He hit a dong. Now, it, what was funny was, okay, a dong every now and again. Nobody hits dongs every night. Nobody wants to see the word dong. I don't want to write the word dong on my art every day. He could have hit a jack. He could have hit a bomb. Could have uh, hit a homer. Uh, dong 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 uh yeah so the next thing i'm going to show you is is a painting that i had done in 2000 and i will say nine because it was a, a minute ago and it was one of 18 paintings that i had made regarding negro league baseball players and since then, I've made a lot of Negro League artwork, but more on the sporadic. This was a focused project that occupied from 2009 to 2011. And during the project, I didn't do any other art. I didn't make a, a single other piece of art of any other anything else. I didn't break out my pencils. I didn't draw. And I basically made a painting a month. And eventually got to show it um, at the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles. And it stayed there for six months. Now, the Museum of Tolerance, if you know, that's that's a that's more of a of a Holocaust type uh, remembrance museum, okay? That, that's like what the museum is kind of about. But I sold them on the exhibit in the in regards to the the tolerance issue, Museum of Tolerance. Friend there too. We worked it out. My paintings lived there for six months, and tons of kids and adults alike got to learn for the first time about the Negro Leagues from me. <clears throat> now, I'm, I don't get too proud of many things, but for a person that 
barely graduated high school, for somebody to learn something from me, that's a great feeling because uh, it means what I do isn't for nothing, you know, and uh, that's a response. And so those types of things are what keep me going. And uh, the the director of the museum, her name is Lieb. To care less about baseball until I brought the exhibit to the museum that she's the director of. And uh, when we had the reception and we also, no, this wasn't even a reception. I went there to go see my friend um, Byron, who at the time wasn't my friend, somebody I knew about, went to see his lecture. And then he put me on the spot because my paintings were at the museum he was talking about. And I kind of just gave an impromptu tour and discussion about the Negro League baseball paintings on the wall. And uh, going back to Lieb, when she had brought her husband to the event, and he's a baseball fan. He's a Yankee fan. He's a New York, New York guy. And he didn't know much about the Negro Leagues. And she gave him some trivia he didn't know. And she had the answer. And she was super proud that she knew something about baseball that her husband didn't know. And this is a very educated woman about other topics. And uh, once again, if your ears, are, your ears and your eyes are open and your mouth is closed... Those are the best times to receive this information. So right now, as I'm flapping my gums, bad time to talk to me. Because I'm talking to you. And uh, so about the painting. This was one of 18 paintings that I had made for the exhibit I called A Game in the B Leagues. And... This show is going to be also about what I can teach you or show you or let you know about from my experiences and the research that I've done. And the best thing about a project that you give everything to, it's been received well. I've said that before too. And when I say received well is... I finished painting these in 2011. And they still get talked about. We still talk about them. They still travel California in exhibits. People borrow them for their exhibits. They show and they have legs. And uh, I've only sold two of them. <clears throat> and... Uh, the reason is because how are you gonna how are you really gonna pay me for for 40 hours of of intense research and artistic application with the purpose how you how you really gonna pay and, and so what happens is you end up the set ends up broken so if you're serious about buying these paintings I have to know that you're serious. I've only I've only let two of them go. One of them was Oscar Charleston, and that one went to a former Major League Baseball manager of the Montreal Expos, Tom Runnels, and he's a he's an artist himself, and likes to talk about the Negro Leagues. So he he's he's got skin in the game. Okay. I like that. I, I, he wants to, he, he doesn't want to just lock it up in his house, but he's already exhibited the work, I believe. But COVID happened. So a lot may not have happened that was supposed to happen. Besides the point, it's in good hands. He appreciates it and he probably treats it like a, a child. Now, recently, I had gotten rid of the second um, painting of the 18. 
and it was my Buck Leonard painting. And that kind of like, it's, it's, this is rolling into what I kind of wanted to talk about anyways. Buck Leonard is one of the greatest Negro League players ever. He was a first baseman for the, uh, for the Grays. And he's, uh, he was teammates with Josh Gibson. And I believe if he was the third, Josh Gibson was the fourth in the lineup. And they were known as the Thunder Twins because they absolutely raked. All right. Like they raked so hard. Like Josh Gibson supposedly has a home run still in orbit. So at least that's what my son thinks when I told him that when he was little. But needless to say, I sold a Buck Leonard to a gentleman named Tad. And Tad, if you're on Instagram, is, uh, look, you may not even know who Tad is, but Tad's behind quite a few things. And he's a huge supporter of the, uh, you know, preservation of the history of the Negro Leagues. And I've I've been bouncing back and forth with Ted for a long time um, via Instagram. And uh, he, he, he bought this, he bought my coloring book um, for himself and I believe some of his, his nephews. And uh, this is my Negro League coloring book. And what we're doing with this is Tad's been trying to get He's been trying to sell my coloring book for a long time, dude. <laughs> this is this is how you know you're not you're not doing too bad in life when people are out there trying to help you with your message, okay? So I said baseball is important and the Negro Leagues are important. And what I wanted to do is get kids involved in learning about this stuff, okay? I made this with no buyers. Um, I've sold some of them. But I just, I make to make. I don't, I mean, making money is nice. But if, if money is the motivator, there's going to be times when the money ain't coming in. And if that's the motivator, you're not, you may not make. Here's a Jackie Robinson on the Kansas City Monarchs draw. Um, the Kansas City Monarchs, that's the drawing. In the coloring book, well, Tad's making something happen, and we're going to move a bunch of these coloring books. And look, man, kids are going to get an interactive way to learn about the Negro Leagues through art and art of mine. And it's something that I can be proud of. One, as an artist. Two, as a, a, a Negro League advocate. Three, as a dad for as a grandparent because uh for me i've noticed that since the information isn't readily available adults and children can benefit from the information and and the presentations so pretty stoked on that you can get that at my website at billcormalisjr.com go to the shop and i'm an independent artist guys so i don't you know Hey, man, go to my website, BillCormalisJr.com. It's in my shop. So uh, it'll go to card art first, hit art and prints. Or you'll find it. It's there. But please pick one up. It, it, you and your kids can do it together. You know what I'm saying? I believe there's 18 of the Negro League's best players in that book. And uh, that was something that I had done as soon as COVID set in and we were you know locked down i just put my you know my pedal to the metal and drew a bunch i mean i'm figuring like i sold some of these during covid and some adults and stuff got to sit at home and do this instead of do nothing a lot of your favorite players from my day are in there and i say my day my my scope of really paying attention to baseball was Will Clark's playing career. So not quite from his rookie year when I got into him is about 89 up until the year he retired. I believe it was 2000. And uh, 
that's still my area of focus. And then older than that, because I like to present the history of baseball. Because one, I don't know where baseball is going and, and we're, we're having another lockdown, my lockdown, lockout. And uh, baseball's looking ugly. And so, uh, uh, you know, for me to keep it fun and for me to keep it interesting for me, I don't really pay too much attention to modern baseball, even though I'm called modern baseball art, but I'm modern baseball art. I, f I figure like, like I will present the art in a more modern way. And that's, that's my take on that. And, uh, but yeah, so baseball isn't in a good place right now. And, uh, for me to keep liking baseball, I just talk about the, the eras that I like and, and just focus on that because, uh, I know where that's going because it happened already. And uh, yeah, so me just broadcasting some of that information to you, I'm, I'm a huge hobbyist. Um, I'm not into collecting for, uh, for the investment aspect of it. I'm into collecting because it's, it's a direct link to my past. You know what I'm saying? Like, I rode, I rode a skateboard from like 10 to 15 or 16 and I broke my bones and I, I was trying to go pro doing that. So I didn't do anything else. It's like one of the first things I really, really, really sunk my teeth into and, uh, you know, tried hard to do something. And then I, I, once again, reoccurring theme, I got in trouble and then I got, went back into baseball and, uh, collecting baseball cards and i'm not gonna say that it kept me out of control out, out of trouble completely but let's just say when me and my friends were do doing the collecting and and looking at beckett magazine checking out prices and the articles and stuff that um we were not getting in trouble because Sitting around doing baseball cards isn't going to get you the chicks, if you know what I mean. So, uh, but, but baseball cards are a cool thing to just dork out on. And uh, for me, it's, it's reminisce about my past, but it, now it's more like talking about it to other people and, and the methods that I use to do it, like the, the type of collection that I have. And uh, I'm lining up some guests, guys. So huh, this would have been a tragedy if if this happened last week. I'm glad I didn't have any guests yet because other than my first episode, which is available on nofilter.net in, uh, in my vault, if you want to check that out for free. <laughs> Supposedly, when I have my my date with my stream here, when I enter my stream, it automatically records. And I didn't know that. And so what I was doing was I was hitting record, then hitting enter stream, and it was cutting out. Hey, little Daniel, what's up, dude? Your dad's a cool guy. He's a rad artist, so... Give him lots of love. <laughs> so, you know, I'm 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 hoping that that kids can see this too. Now, now I did mention there's coarse language, and that that may be because an F word might slip out or a or a S word. But I'm gonna try to keep this show within that realm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Just like your uncle that has a foul mouth thing. And he tries. He tries for the kids. But when he gets heated up about something, you know, I'll drop an F-bomb or two. So don't hate me for that. Love me for that. Okay? But no overuse of bad language and stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it mostly family friendly. Um... Did I even show the painting yet? I just start talking and woo, woo, woo. There you go. And I try to keep this thing to an hour. So I'm going to give this thing just a couple minutes of attention. 
hey, if you guys are on on the social medias and whatnot, you'll see this stuff. I, you know, I'm not scared to show the same artwork over and over again um, when it has a point. So this is Jackie on the uh, on the Monarchs, and uh, look, there's actually a painting underneath this painting. You can see all this texture right here. This was actually a, a an elephant that I had constructed out of dried paint, and then it never became anything. And I just thought I'd flip it upside down and use the texture from that elephant as you know texture now um i'll just kind of like drag it across but i cut letters out of canvas and that's what that is and i use a lot of baseballs and used baseballs for me it's a point to use used baseballs because um there comes a point in a baseball's life one that's been um used like a baseball that's been used there comes a point when that used baseball is no longer um deemed acceptable to use and that's like too many too many uh threads coming out or nice big tear in the and the leather but uh you know i like to use those balls and 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 they get to live on in a painting so uh I just use this weird little black shape to put in the year of their death. And that was that. So each painting from this set has a lot of the same techniques used. Uh, let's see what this says right here. Oh, yeah. First rookie of the year. First uh, winner of that award. And, uh, Anyhow, uh, yeah, that's that, this is what I do. I make art all the time, and uh, I want to share that with you guys. Um, I mean, if I didn't make another piece of art for the next couple years, I, I believe I would have um, content for this this platform here. Now, uh, once again, you guys. When we collect stuff, we collect the stuff that we want to collect. And uh, though it was an offer in uh, in uh, October for started out at 2000, then went up to 21, then got up to $2,300 for this. This right here. So... People are out there collecting, they're collecting hard, and they're willing to drop the, that coin for it. And uh, But guess what? Like I said, my cold dead hands, there's so much more to, to this art than just it being a one of 11 prints. Uh, so for me, uh, sentimental value, the story that goes behind this, uh, Daniel and I got a little bit of history. I can't wait to meet him in real life. But yeah, it, it's cool to be part of a community that, uh, look, bro, the guys I'm dealing with are harmless because we're really, we're, I'm going to say this, I'm an innocent collector. I literally just found out what shit bidding was like, because I'm not, I don't, I don't go on auctions. I, I, I buy a lot of stuff like buy me now because I don't want to fuck with the auctions. I just, it's so skeevy to me. And the way shill bidding works is you got the the clowns on the inside and they're manipulating the 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 numbers going up. And so when that's the game, it's not a it's not a fair game. Like like to be jacking up a market for stuff. Now Daniel created himself a sweet little thing right here, and it's doing really rad. And uh but this was one of the first the first era prints, and only eleven of them got out there, and I got one of them, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I do have the best one. So to me, this is I don't I don't even know what the number on the back is. I don't give a rat's ass if it's number one or not. Daniel made the artwork for me, 
and he didn't make it for you. So that's that's what you're taking from my collection if you really, really want it. A cherished piece of art. Not just uh not the faux comic book cover print. So there you go. Um Jeremy, who's a guy I gotta get on the show. He's a longtime friend, longtime collector buddy of mine, still collects, he collects a ton of stuff. I don't know if he's watching still, but um, he's on this other live that I'm doing right here. And uh, I guess it's pretty simple, you guys. I'd love to have you on the show. Daniel, if you're watching, I'd love it. Um, and I'll just send you a link, and you can get in the back door of this thing, and um, we can talk about your collection, because right on, Jeremy. So um, I'm going to text you when I'm done with this thing and um see when the best time is for you because like I said I just have a link you go in the back door and we can do this dude but thank you for watching the bill collector where I'm bill and I'm a collector and uh, we talk uh baseball cards collecting whatever you collect and whatever else pops up and this this month the whatever else that pops up is going to be Negro League baseball players of which I've made artwork and try to do my best to tell the to tell those guys story now uh what's funny is I was talking about Jackie Robinson and got sidetracked and blah 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 but anyways that's how it works um this I got a lot to talk about just in this room right here and uh we'll get to it sooner or later thanks for watching guys I appreciate you um nofilter.net dude jeremy like i said i'm gonna talk to you when i'm done with this thing peace guys the bill collector